Hello, in today's video we have this 2013 Ford Fusion and what we're going to be doing is uh, replace the, the brake pads and the front rotors. Uh, the reason why is uh, because when you're driving the car and you hit the brakes, there is an abnormal vibration in the steering wheel, which is a pretty common symptom or, uh, for uh, bad rotors. And that's what we're going to be doing. Um, still, I'm going to uh, remove the tire, make an, a visual inspection. If there is nothing uh, wrong with the brake pads or the rotor, then we will proceed to review some, some other stuff. But most likely that's going to be the problem and that's what we're going to be doing today. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the cylinder into its cavity. Uh, in order to do that, well, first of all, I already disconnect my battery because I don't want to have the ABS system active. I don't want to damage any valve. And the second thing is um, I'm going to release or lose a little bit this uh, valve that is going to allow the, the, the brake fluid come out from here when I'm like pushing in the cylinder. And I'm going to catch all the liquid in uh, this empty bottle of oil. The reason to do that is just to protect the ABS as much as possible. Uh, side note, uh, I'm going to use a couple of screwdrivers to pull the cylinder inside of the cavity. And uh, just uh, to explain how at least I do this thing is when I stick this, the screwdriver, I always place it between the brake pad and the rotor, never directly to the cylinder. The reason for this is to try to push the cylinder in the most like even way possible and avoid any damages inside of the cavity. Close the valve now again. Even if um, I didn't get outside of the hose a lot of uh, brake fluid, it's good to clean it because the brake fluid is super, super, super corrosive. We don't have, we don't want to have um, brake fluid around or metallic parts. And now we're going to remove the caliper bolts. Uh, there are two. One is here, the other one is down here. There is a plastic cap. We will remove those with a, with a screwdriver. And to remove the bolts, we're going to use this Allen socket, which is the HW7. I already lose the two bolts of the caliper, but now we have here this uh, metallic bracket that we also need to we need to release in order to be able to remove the caliper.
Here we can appreciate in the brake pad, um, there is an abnormal wear in the external side of the brake pad and also in the internal. This is a pretty classic symptom of a bad rotor, which in this case is good because uh, with this we confirm the initial diagnosis is right. So this is creating the issue with the vibrations in the steering wheel when we hit the brakes. So now I'm gonna uh, remove the rotor and once I do that, we, we, we will be able to, to check the inner side of it and see the issue in a clear way. I have here my rotor and as you guys can see, uh, the external face, even if it's not perfect, is in a kind of decent condition. However, the internal face is telling us a different story. We can appreciate right away uh, there are two different rugosities, which is uh, what is causing the brake pads to get wear uneven and also a lot of rust, which is pretty common in the area where I live. And uh, this is telling us basically that the rotor is the, the, the problem that is causing the vibrations in the, in the steering wheel. So we're gonna go ahead and replace uh, the, the, the rotors and the brake pads. Time for the new brake pads. I'm gonna place a little bit of brakes lubricant. Time to place my new bracket. Finally, to finish here, I'm gonna place back the caps of the uh, caliper bolts and the cap of this valve.
Time to place the, the tire again. With this, I finished the process. I tagged my tire too. And uh, finally, the only thing that I'm gonna do now, well, obviously this process needs to be done in the in the other side of the car, in the passenger side. Uh, usually, uh, when you replace your brake pads, you do uh, by pairs and not just a single, single side. But uh, before I go ahead and do that, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside of the car and uh, hit the brakes a few times. This because, as you remember, we we displace the the, the cylinder in thir, in, into the, the the caliper cavity that being said uh right now our brakes in this side are not working so i have to go and pump the brakes in order to make the the cylinder come out and then uh that will create a contact between the brake pads brake pads and my new, my new disc if i don't do that and i just like forget about it and i do the other side and then i turn on the car and i just start to drive uh most likely Initially, I'm not gonna have brakes even if I hit the, the, the brakes inside of the car That will lead to an accident and that's something that you guys want to avoid for your customers or if you're working in your car for yourselves um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I don't really know if the camera is gonna be able to catch any movement uh, in, Here like uh, in the caliper or with the brake pads, but um, either way I'm gonna do it and, and see how it goes Okay, um, I already did that. Now uh, my uh, my brake pedal is uh, in the way that should be. It's not soft. It's not going uh, all the way down. And pretty much with this, uh, we finished the the whole process. Um, I hope this this video is useful for you guys. And if that is the case, I will appreciate if you click on like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.